Hello, White Mountain Elementary students, and here we are continuing with our story, Hank the Cow Dog, The Case of the Raging Rottweiler. Today, I am reading Chapter 7, Bruiser Returns. There I was on the front porch, barking my very heart out and trying to get the message through Slam's thick skull that a raging Rottweiler was standing in his yard. All of that, and guess what he did? He drenched me with a pot of cold water. See, I told you that you wouldn't believe it, and sure enough, you didn't. I couldn't believe it either. I mean, there I was, in the trenches, in the foxholes of life, in a very dangerous combat situation, doing my job and trying to protect his house from a raging Rottweiler. And he stepped out on the porch and threw a pot of water on me. Slam dead. Oh, and then he said, this is an exact quote, he said, Hank, I've run out of nice ways to tell you to quit barking. Now shut up and let me get some sleep. Bam, the door closed and he was gone. As water dribbled off the end of my nose, I sensed that my relationship with Slim had taken a plunge into a new direction. Up to then, it had been a mixture of good and bad. From now on, it would be a mixture of bad and worse. I would have to resign, of course, and leave the ranch forever. Slim and I would never see each other again. I had no other choice. You can't humiliate the head of ranch security and expect him to go on as though nothing had happened. No, it was over. My friendship with Slim. Chance came to a bitter end the very moment he dumped that pot of, huh? Laughter. I heard a deep, wicked laugh coming from the direction of the yard. And suddenly, I was reminded that uh, I had re recently mouthed off to a very large poodle. And yes, it appeared that we had more pa pressing problems than my souring relations with Slim. Bruiser was out there in the darkness. I still couldn't see him, but now I could hear him breathing. Your Rottweilers are sloppy breathers. Did you know that? They are. They snort and slop when they breathe. And on a dark night, it sounds pretty eerie. I ran my gaze through the darkness. Drover, can you hear me? No answer then. I hear you. Good. Listen carefully. Our situation is looking grim. Number one, I have reason to believe that there is a dangerous Rottweiler in front of the house. I thought you said he was a scaredy cat. We may have gotten some bad information on that, son. Okay, number two. We barked the house for reinforcements. Remember? They're not coming. We're cut off from the main column and we're on our own. Yeah, I know. Okay, number three. We need a volunteer to lead a scouting mission into the yard. We must find out what we're facing here. And number four, we've talked about how I need to be giving you more responsibility. Remember? Oh, yeah. Well, this would be a great opportunity for you to uh, prove what you're made of. Yeah, but I already know. Spaghetti. Spaghetti, Drover, are you saying? Drover, where are you? Give me your exact location. I'm on top of the wood pile. On top, Drover, get down here at once. Our porch is under assault. Yeah, and it could be under a pepper, and I'd still be up here. What? Are you refusing to obey a direct order? Drover, I command you to answer my question. Can't hear you, Hank. You'll have to yell. I must have some wax in my ear. You've got wax in your brain, and as your commanding officer, I demand. Bruiser's ugly laugh cut through the darkness. It's looking pretty bad, ain't it, boys? Two mutts on the porch, and neither one has the guts to stand up and fight. Did I dare respond? Yes, I had to. I would deal with Drover lately. Oh, Bruiser, is that you? Hey, how's it going? Pretty dark night, huh? Yeah, real dark. Too dark for a town dog like me to be out walking around. You know, I might get lost or something. What I really need is a nice porch to sleep on. Know what I mean? A porch? Yes, porches are uh, nice. They sure are. And hey, I just remembered. The next house down the creek has a great porch. Bigger than this one. Oh, it's better. Much, much better. Glider swings, pillows, you name it. Great porch. Maybe you could... Nah, I don't need the exercise, even though some smart guy once said I walk like a fat duck. Fat duck? Now who would... 
Oh, you mean me? <laughs> that was just a joke, Bruiser. Honest, just a joke. Good, wholesome humor. But no kidding, I think you'd love the porch down the creek. It's worth the walk. Nah, I'm scared of the dark. And besides, I like your porch. You do? Well, uh, thanks. That's a nice compliment. Although the porch actually belongs to Slam, and I'm not sure he'd want you uh, sleeping here on his porch. Don't you see? Yeah, we'll bark him out of bed again and we'll ask. Oh, no, I think not. We tried that and, well, he's um, asked that we do not disturb him. Bruiser was moving up the steps. I could hear his sloppy breathing. Well, gee, what can we do? I mean, I sure wouldn't want to sleep here if I'm not welcome. Oh, it's nothing personal. You just, he just doesn't allow a, uh, well, strange dog. See, sleeping on the porch. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, well, here's the way I figure it. I'm going to sleep on your porch. The only question is, how many dogs do I have to kill before I do it? I tried to swallow the cotton and wool inside my mouths. How many dogs? Bruiser, may I ask you a personal question? We were told, that is, we received a tip, that, well, maybe you're not as mean as you um seem to be. Is there any, well, truth to that? I heard him laugh. Well, now I guess you could bet your life on it and find out. Oh, no, that's not necessary, really. No, it's a big porch. Bruiser, and I'm sure there's plenty of... I have no I an idea. I'll sleep on the porch, and you sleep on top of the wood pile with your buddy. How does that sound? He was right beside me now. I could feel his hot dragon breath on my face. Actually, Bruiser, I think it would look bad. Undignified. See, I'm head of ranch. He cut loose with a low, deep growl. Oh, on second thought, that would be fine. The wood pile would be great. No problem. Drover, make way. I'm coming up. I leaped up on top of the wood pile. Drover was there, of course, and he greeted with me. Oh, hi. What are you doing up here? Never mind. Scoot over. It seems we're going to be sharing this bunk. Oh, good, but I thought, never mind, scoot over and dry up. He skied over and dried up, and silence fell over our little compound. The silence didn't last long. Drover, the little goof, fell right off to sleep. How could he sleep at such a time? And began, began making his usual orchestra of weird sounds, wheezing, whistling, honking, and grunting in his sleep. As if that weren't bad enough, Bruiser had his own set of noises. Remember what I said about Rottweilers being sloppy breathers? Well, guess what they do in their sleep? They snore. He snored like a 10-ton truck. No kidding, it was terrible. Who could sleep in the midst of such noise? I'll tell you who. Drover and Bruiser. Oh, and Slim. Mister couldn't sleep for all the noise and doused me with a pot of water. Now that we had a Rottweiler King Kong occupying our porch, Slim slept like a rock. A great help he turned out to be. Well, I knew I would be up for the rest of the night. I mean, not only was the noise unbearable, but I had many things on my mind. Such as, what would Slim say in the morning if he found the entire security division um, asleep on the heights of the woodpile? It wouldn't look good, not good at all. And worrying about such detonks is just the sort of thunk that keeps me a wonk all night. All night, I should say. See, I spend a lot of my toink worrying a bonk such tiny derails details. My mind is very okra. Don't you sleep? And it conks me a wonking snork murk, boiled turnips, chasing rabbits through the pillow feathers. <sighs> Okay, maybe I finally dozed off. And the next thing I knew, huh, I heard a door open and found myself staring at a scarecrow. That was odd. Scarecrows live in gardens, right? And this was no garden. This was, I blinked my eyes and studied my surrenders, my surroundings, shall we say, the porch. I was lying on the porch, on the woodpile, actually, and the scarecrow turned out to be slim. The events of the previous evening came rushing back to my memory banks, and I found myself beaming, uh, looks of great embarrassment towards Slim. 
and giving my tail slow taps as if to say, I know this looks odd, but hear me out. I can explain everything. He blinked his soggy red eyes. What are you fools doing on the woodpile? Then his gaze slid away from me and fell upon the sleeping monster on our porch. His eyebrows shot up. Good honk, it's Bruiser. Is that what you dogs were barking about? Oh, brother. Just then, Bruiser woke up and raised his head. He looked straight into Slim's eyes. Rottweilers do that, you know. They have a way of staring directly at someone and showing not one hint of fear. They just stare. You don't have any idea what's going through their minds. That must have unnerved old Slim because he backed into the house and we re when he returned a moment later, he was armed with a catch rope. I felt an impulse to stand up and cheer, but I didn't because I knew that we were about to enter into a very dangerous moment. Let's see if I can describe it. From where I was sitting, it appeared that Slim had chosen the rope as his weapon of choice. See, a cowboy's rope can either be a catching device or a pretty good substitute for a club, depending on the situation. I'd seen Slim kill big rattlesnakes with his rope, pull the loop down to a knot, swing the knot around on six feet of rope, and then whack, you could crush a rattlesnake's head with one shot. Without taking his eyes off Bruiser, he built a small loop and took a step in Bruiser's direction. Bruiser's eyes never moved or wavered. Slim started talking in a voice that was soft but firm. Now, Bruiser, you've lost your way in the world, and I mean you no harm. I'm going to ease this loop around your neck so you'll be around when Joe McCall gets here to pick you up. It's for your own good, and nobody's going to hurt you. Unless you decide to play King Kong again, and then, son, the fur will fly. Yours. Slim took another step. Bruiser didn't flinch or move or show any emotion at all. Their eyes were locked together. Drover woke up, saw the scene unfolding, and covered his eyes with his paws. Slam took another step. Bruiser stared. The tension grew and grew. I could hardly stand to watch it. I had a feeling that something terrible was about to happen, and this is getting too scary. I don't think we'd better go on. And that is the end of chapter seven. We will be continuing on tomorrow with chapter eight. And the title of chapter eight is Much Too Scary for Most Readers. I'll be looking forward to seeing you then. Have a great day.